Let me show you some code. We suppose that we have a function named uh, pdivide that takes two numbers, computes their quotient and their remainder, and returns a promise with these results. Let's see how to use that promise maker. The first promise divide 25 and 4. Its then method takes two arguments, two functions, that I name sequels. The unary then method takes a success sequel. The binary then method takes in addition a failure sequel. A failure sequel can also be directly attached with the catch method. Remember that sequels will become orphan computations. The success sequel of pdivide will receive a record with quotient and remainder properties. The failure sequel will receive a division by zero error. Only one of these two sequels will be invoked. So the two first examples illustrate these two types of sequels. You see here the p divide which returns undefined. So this is a result of this whole expression. Same for p divide, and now the success sequel prints the quotient of the remainder, and the error sequel prints the division by zero. And you see, after examining the uh, call stack, that uh, this is really an orphan computation since it's called by the runtime library. Let's see another example, a more complex example, where sequels are chained. This example shows how sequels can be chained. First, we create a promise and we store it in the promise variable. The next two instructions, this one and this one, append two success sequels to that same promise. Note, however, that these sequels, this one and this one, will be run sequentially. The sequel 2, here, will print other than 2. You can see it here. The first uh, sequel, the sequel 1, will print then 1, followed by the quotient, that is 6. To success sequel 1 is appended a failure sequel called 3. Since the result of sequel 1 is not a failure, this failure sequel is not invoked. So control is then given to success sequel 4, this one. This sequel 4 will print then 4 and 1, you can see it here, but it throws the remainder that is 1. So throwing is interpreted as a failure. The success sequel 5 is then skipped since we have a failure to handle, but the failure sequel 6 will handle it and it will print code 6 and the reason of a failure, which is the remainder thrown here, that is 1, and you can see it here. We return 42, which is interpreted as a success result. So now the success sequel 7 is triggered, and it prints then 7 and the number 42. And this ends the chain of sequels. Chaining is very powerful. Returning from whatever sequel is a success, throwing from whatever sequel is a failure. Failure sequels are skipped in case of a success, and success sequels are skipped in case of failure. That's all.